Homo sapiens. Who are we? Where do we come from? In chapter 14, we're going to begin a more detailed look at modern humans. In the last few chapters, we have looked at modern humans in the context of their interactions with the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. In chapter 14, we will seek to define what makes a modern human a modern human. What is the difference between an anatomically modern human and a behaviorally modern human? And what occurred at roughly the 50,000 year mark that seemed to spur a cultural revolution in modern humans as well as stimulating their migration out of Africa into Eurasia? We will delve into these questions and more in chapter 14. Let's start with a quick overview of the evolutionary history of modern humans. The oldest fossils of modern humans were discovered in 1967 in the Omokabish Formation along the Omo River in southwestern Ethiopia by a research team directed by Richard Leakey. The fossils were dated to about 195,000 years ago. The Omo fossils are the earliest remains of anatomically modern humans discovered to date. Rounding a bit date-wise, we can say that anatomically modern humans made their appearance in Eastern Africa around the 200,000 year mark. Behaviorally modern humans make an appearance on the African scene around the 50,000 year mark. This distinction between anatomically modern humans and behaviorally modern humans brings us to an important anthropological debate. Let's take a moment to look at this debate surrounding anatomically modern humans versus behaviorally modern humans. The debate is essentially about the emergence of modern human behavior as witnessed in the appearance of more sophisticated tool making and more complex artwork around the 50,000 year mark. Was this emergence sudden or was it gradual? The sudden change hypothesis goes by the name of the Great Leap Forward or the Upper Paleolithic Revolution. The gradual change hypothesis is known as the continuity hypothesis. The proponents of the sudden emergence hypothesis hold that behaviorally modern humans appeared around 50,000 years ago as the result of a genetic mutation which led to significant changes in the human brain. These changes in the human brain led to more complex language and abstract thinking which led to more sophisticated technologies and increasingly complex cultural expressions. The proponents of the gradual emergence hypothesis or the continuity hypothesis hold that there was no sudden or fundamental genetic change which resulted in behaviorally modern humans. The emergence of modern human behavior was a gradual process evolving over many thousands of years as the accumulation of knowledge and skill was passed on generation to generation. The proponents of the Great Leap Forward argue that anatomically modern humans prior to 50,000 years ago were behaviorally primitive. They were closer in their thought processes to Neanderthals and other archaic humans. In support of their claim, the proponents of the sudden change hypothesis point to the archaeological record which shows an abundance of complex artifacts, including artwork and bone tools, which appear after the 50,000 year mark. Prior to the 50,000 year mark, these more complex artifacts are absent from the archaeological record. The proponents of the continuity hypothesis argue that what the Great Leap Forward proponents are seeing is sudden behavioral change is actually the accumulation of skills and knowledge gained over thousands of years reaching a trip point around the 50,000 year mark. This cultural trip point or change in human cultures may have been triggered by population expansion. Higher population densities fostered an expansion in trade which led to an accelerated exchange of ideas and technologies. This mixing of peoples and ideas led to a cultural revolution that was expressed in more sophisticated tool industries as well as artwork and body ornamentation. To summarize the debate, the Great Leap Forward proponents would see a basic difference between anatomically modern humans and behaviorally modern humans based on mental capabilities with some genetic change in brain function leading to a cultural revolution around the 50,000 year mark. Continuity proponents would see anatomically modern humans and behaviorally modern humans as mentally equivalent, with the cultural revolution around the 50,000 year mark being explained by accumulated knowledge and a growing population exploding in a synergistic nexus that was manifested in increasingly sophisticated technologies and artistic expression. Whatever the reason, around the 50,000 year mark we find a modern human population with more sophisticated technologies capable of abstract thought expressed in artwork and language beginning to migrate out of Africa moving eastward into Asia and northward into Europe. But what exactly triggered this migration out of Africa by modern humans? Let's take a look at some of the leading theories concerning the migration of modern humans out of Africa. 
before we begin our look into the migration of modern humans out of Africa roughly 50,000 years ago, let's take a moment to delineate the main characteristics that set behaviorally modern humans apart from their archaic ancestors. Among the main characteristics or evidence that archaeologists might look for in identifying behaviorally modern humans at an archaeological site would be finely made stone tools, evidence of fishing, evidence of barter or exchange over long distances, use of body ornamentation such as pigments or jewelry, artwork such as cave paintings or figurines, evidence of game playing, evidence of music, evidence of the cooking and seasoning of foods as opposed to consuming them raw, burial of their dead in some ceremonial fashion. Less tangible aspects of behavioral modernity would include language, religion, myths, jokes, and songs, which may not show up in the archaeological record, but are in evidence as part of the cultural universals shared by all groups of behaviorally modern humans down through history. The fact that these cultural universals are found throughout modern humanity seems to indicate that they developed in Africa prior to modern humans migrating out of Africa into Eurasia and eventually the entire world. To what degree some aspect of these characteristics may have been shared by our archaic cousins such as the Neanderthals is still being debated. We will now return to our look at how and why modern humans started migrating out of Africa at roughly the 50,000 year mark. Let's begin by saying that it is somewhat speculative to set the migration of modern humans out of Africa at the 50,000 year mark. The actual time frame of how and when modern humans left Africa is still being debated in scientific circles. As of yet, there is no simple answer. The 50,000 year mark seems a safe fit based on current archaeological and genetic evidence, but the date of modern human migration out of Africa could be pushed back some thousands of years as we will see. The genetic evidence seems to be the main limiting factor on the time frame of modern human migration out of Africa. All non-African mitochondrial DNA haplogroups or ancestral groups are derived from the L3 haplogroup which arose in Eastern Africa by current estimates between 58,900 to 70,200 years ago. Since all modern humans outside of Africa are ancestral to the L3 haplogroup, genetically speaking, the upper time frame for the migration out of Africa would be around the 70,000 year mark. There is a caveat though. The time frame for the appearance of the L3 haplogroup is based on estimated mitochondrial DNA mutation rates. DNA mutation rates, sometimes referred to as molecular clocks, are used to estimate the time back to a last common ancestor. If these estimated rates or molecular clocks are incorrect, then the time frame could be off by thousands of years. Taking this into account, we will give a rough time span of 50,000 to 70,000 years ago for the migration of the L3 haplogroup of modern humans out of Africa. Let's now turn to the archaeological evidence for the migration of modern humans out of Africa. We will begin with a general overview of some of the more important archaeological sites associated with modern human remains and artifacts. Looking at our map of Africa and Eurasia, let's pinpoint some of the key archaeological sites that will help give us an overview of the movements of modern humans out of Africa. We will first note the Omokibish site in southwestern Ethiopia, which we mentioned earlier in Chapter 14. At 195,000 years old, Omo Kibish represents the oldest known fossils of anatomically modern humans and seems to establish the appearance of modern humans in eastern Africa around the 200,000 year mark. Next, we will note the Kassa and school cave sites in Israel dating to roughly 100,000 years in the past. The remains of early modern humans were found at these sites. This early migration out of Africa ended in failure as around the 80,000 year mark modern humans disappear from the Levantine region as conditions become colder and drier. Whether these early modern human migrants died off or retreated back into Africa is unknown, but around the 76,000 year mark, Neanderthals are pushing southward out of Europe into the Levant. Another very interesting site is the Jebel Fayez site near the town of Al Madam in the United Arab Emirates on the Arabian Peninsula. The oldest layer of the site, Layer C, was dated to 125,000 years ago. Stone tools uncovered in Layer C were similar to those created by modern humans in Eastern Africa in that same 125,000 year time frame. 
As there is no direct fossil evidence of modern humans at the Jebel Faya site, there is still some question as to whether Jebel Faya represents evidence of a modern human migration out of Africa. Around the 125,000 year mark, the Arabian Peninsula would have been greener and wetter and thus more favorable to human habitation. It is possible that modern human migrants could have crossed to the Arabian Peninsula at the onset of marine isotope stage 5E around the 130,000 year mark when sea levels at the Bab el Mandeb Strait would have been low. From the Levantine sites, we know that modern humans moved northward across the Sinai out of Africa and were occupying the Levant around the 100,000 year mark. It is possible that earlier migrations of modern humans also took this northern route through the Levant, moving around the Arabian Peninsula to the present-day site of Jebel Faya. As of now, whether Jebel Faya represents an early migration out of Africa by modern humans is still under investigation. When looking at the migration of modern humans out of Africa, another site of interest is the Jawalapuram site in southern India. Jawalapuram is actually a series of archaeological sites located in the Jareru River Valley in the Andhra Pradesh state of India. The Jawalapuram archaeological complex spans a large time frame from around 140,000 years to 3,000 years in the past. Stone tools uncovered at Jawalapuram from the time frame around the 74,000 year mark are of interest when considering modern human migrations out of Africa. The 74,000 year mark is also of interest due to the eruption of the Toba supervolcano on Sumatra in Indonesia around this same time. The Toba eruption was the largest volcanic eruption on the Earth in the last two million years. The eruption covered all of India in a layer of volcanic ash that varied from several centimeters to several meters in thickness. At the Jawalapuram site, researchers have uncovered stone tools above and below the Toba volcanic ash layer would show affinities to stone tools made by modern humans in eastern Africa around the 74,000 year mark. As there is no biological fossil evidence for modern humans at the Jawalapuram site, it is speculative to tie the site to modern humans. But the fact that human artifacts exist above and below the volcanic ash layer indicates that our human ancestors, whether archaic or modern, had the skill and capacity to survive a very horrific event in the form of the Toba eruption and continue to thrive thereafter. The next site we will look at is the Tampaling site in northern Laos. The Tampaling site is located in a cave atop Pahang Mountain in the Anamite Mountain Range. In 2009, researchers led by Dr. Lara Shackelford uncovered the fragments of a skull belonging to an anatomically modern human at the Tampaling site. The skull fragments represent the remains of the oldest modern human fossil found in Southeast Asia to date. The skull fragments were dated to a range of 46,000 to 63,000 years old. The Tampaling discovery provides significant evidence that modern humans had ranged out of Africa as far east as Laos by the roughly 50,000 year mark, if not earlier. The next site we will look at is Rottnest Island off the western coast of Australia. Rottnest Island lies about 11 miles or 19 kilometers off the coast of Australia near Perth and Fremantle. The actual evidence for early humans on Rottnest is rather sparse, consisting only of three stone flakes and a felspar pebble. The dating of the stone flakes is put at greater than 50,000 years. The felspar pebble is significant because the closest source of felspar comparable to the flake specimen is located on the mainland, about 50 kilometers east of Rottnest Island. This indicates that the flake material had to be transported to the island across a distance of 50 kilometers. Another important site along the west coast of Australia is a cave known as Devil's Lair. The Devil's Lair Cave lies about 5 kilometers inland from the coast, just south of Margaret River, Australia. Evidence of human occupation of the cave has been dated back to 48,000 years ago. Further evidence that modern humans had ranged far outside of Africa by the 50,000 year mark. In Europe, we have two important sites which give some indication of the time frame of the movement of modern humans northward into Europe. The Pestera Kuase site in southwestern Romania, where the remains of modern humans dated to 37,800 years ago were found, provides evidence of the movement of modern humans into Europe. The Pestera Kuase remains are some of the oldest remains of modern humans found in Europe to date. The Grata de Cavallo site in southern Italy, dated to 44,000 years ago, seems to hint at an even earlier movement of modern humans into Europe. 
colder climate and competition with the Neanderthals would have been a hindrance to the northward movement into Europe by modern humans. But by the 30,000 year mark, modern humans were dominating the European landscape. From the genetic and archeological evidence we've looked at, we can see that it is probably a safe bet that modern humans had migrated eastward out of Africa by the 50,000 year mark. It is also possible that the general date of the eastward migration could have been as early as the 70,000 year mark. The movement northward into Europe was occurring around the 40,000 year mark. Further research and discoveries will help sharpen the timelines of the migration of modern humans out of Africa. But what about the whys of the movement of modern humans out of Africa? In chapter 15, we will undertake a deeper look at modern humans in Africa and the possible reasons for their migration out of Africa into the rest of the world.